I think one devotee asked Ramana, you know, I've been doing self-inquiry for many years, but nothing has been changed. I'm still having lots of problems. And Ramana said, because you don't have the strength. Because you don't have the strength? Yeah, of mind. Yeah. Concentration. But where you come from, you've been doing lots of meditation before, so it comes easily for you. But maybe many of us do not have that strength. You may not have the strength to immediately, mm -hmm. completely detach from all that, mm -hmm. but you can build up the strength to right. consciously deal with it. Yeah, Ramana said it just do meditation to build strength for the man. Right. Yeah. Mm. But then, uh, meditation, what does it mean? It does, <laughs> it does again, either you doing inquiry or you observing your breath, or you doing a mantra, or you doing some other p technique, but we got to build some kind of a strength to make it effective. The strength comes with the practice. With not giving up when it seems difficult, mm -hmm. but just go, go on. The strength comes with the sincerity. And the sincerity comes with having a good look at yourself, seeing what's going on, seeing how I make myself suffer all the time, how I'm creating all the trouble and being really sincerely fed up. <laughs> not, want, not wanting to suffer anymore. <laughs> right, of course, you can say uh, that inquiry is not having the fruit because of the missing strength, but the strength comes by continuing to do the inquiry or to do some other way. Somehow we can only find the strength and the sincerity and the courage to continue when deep down that feeling is there. I've had it. I don't, I don't want to just continue being miserable all the time. <laughs> Instead of running after so many things, trying to, over, to cover up the fact that deep down I'm just creating misery for myself all the time. To have the courage to confront it and see, okay, I've, I've been making everybody and everything responsible that I'm not well. I've always made everybody responsible that my life is not a happy life. But I've never really sincerely looked at myself and seen I am doing that to myself. And if we start to do that, then we stop always accusing everybody else and have a good, honest look and observe what we are doing. And that, that feeling comes, that urge, that it's not natural to be like this. I want to be naturally at ease, at peace. It's there, that yearning in everybody, because it's natural to be like this. <coughs> Simply, we have been doing so many crazy things, trying to get back to that state of happiness, thinking that if I accumulate more this, that if I do more of that, <laughs> I'm getting that. And it's always momentarily giving the illusion, and very quickly one becomes aware, no, it's not doing the job. <laughs> If that sincerity is there, it's not really difficult to go about it and to keep doing it. If that sincerity is not there, it's practically impossible. <laughs> and that sincerity comes by really looking what's going on and honestly accepting for oneself, stop creating all those guilty ones that are guilty for my misery. 
see that I'm doing that to myself over and over and over and over and over again. And I sincerely decide I don't want to do that anymore. And that intent to free ourselves from that that can be strengthened by consciously repeating it, that intent. I want to free myself from all that. I want to get rid of all that that always pulls me again into the same type of soup, <laughs> going round and round and round in the same times of situations, repeating in with little variations the same stuff over and over and over, my reactions the same over and over and over, and always feeling not happy, always having the tendency that life is just misery. <laughs> but we sincerely decide, I don't want to do that anymore. And if that sincerity builds up, then we have also the strength to continue, even if we may not have the strength to simply do an inquiry and immediately, because of that inquiry, drop all that. <laughs> so is it like a no turning back required? <coughs> it's not that you have to decide now, I'm not doing anything else. It's not that you have to become an ascetic now. If you want to become an ascetic, become an ascetic. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but <laughs> but if, you <laughs> if you don't want to become an ascetic, then have your little, little <coughs> amusements in your life. But learn more and more to be alert and observe <laughs> and see where the happiness really is coming. <coughs> it's not that you have to decide from now on, my life is purely spiritual. Then <laughs> 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 it just, just it may become another trip. <laughs> Live your life as, it, as the life comes along. But learn to be observing. Live your life consciously, not half asleep, and then in a moment of, in a peak, of joy, there is some intensity, in the peak of fear, there is some intensity, and the rest of the time, we come down and just to sort of survive <laughs> till the next peak is there. Live your life, but live your life alert. And then in that sense, right, there is no turning back. But not in the sense that you, you have to tell yourself now, only spiritual practice and nothing else, and no turning back. <laughs> if you want to do that, fine. But it has to really come from your heart that you can't do anything else. But just live your life, your normal life, if you live it consciously, then that's all the spirituality that you need. <laughs> Don't necessarily have to get locked in a cave. <laughs> 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 you tried everything, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of it, my guru had to literally drive me crazy. <laughs> before I was ready to let go. <laughs> she did that masterfully, systematically, <laughs> consciously, on purpose, driving me nuts. Until I really started to get nuts. <laughs> she knew how far she can push me that I'm not going uh, irreparably over the edge. <laughs> and only when I thought all was, l all was lost, <laughs> and I had all these, <coughs> all these imaginations already now they are going to pack me in a plane and send me to Switzerland and there my father is standing there I told you all the time <laughs> 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 
then I started to finally get ready <laughs> to really let go. <laughs> because previous, I accepted, okay, you have to let go, you have to let go, you have to let go, you have to detach. But still, I always wanted to be in charge. <laughs> Previous, I knew everything. <laughs> I studied <laughs> spiritual books. <laughs> I had done this and had done that. <laughs> so I had my whole spiritual knowledge I knew. <laughs> then, at a certain time, all this started to crush down. It didn't make any sense anymore. And only when I, <laughs> I finally was ready to accept, to really sin sincerely see, I don't have a clue <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> I just have to somehow go through it, what's happening there. I understood and it's just a game eventually that nothing really bad is happening. But still, it was and <coughs> and all the structures, all my reality had been come crashing down. Previous, I used to <laughs> coming from the Advaita teaching, used to say it's all a dream, it's unreal, it's unreal. <laughs> but then, when it really was crashing down, <laughs> then I desperately tried to hold to <laughs> onto something <laughs> real. <laughs> And everything went through my fingers. Nothing was there anymore to hold on, and it was sheer terror. <laughs> Until I stopped struggling, 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 struggling against it and accept, okay, finally I can accept I don't have a clue what's going on. I just have to let happen what is happening. <laughs> So you were ready to board the plane to Switzerland then? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined all this stuff is going to happen. <laughs> no, no, nobody wanted to send me to Switzerland. <laughs> and then, that whole countdown, when I stopped resisting, mm -hmm. when I accepted, okay, I'm, I'm not in a, bi in a glorious position, but I stop resisting to what is happening and then let it happen and relax. And then it was not that the old structures, the old reality again build up as it was been. It was like out of the rubble <laughs> and totally new experience started to emerge. And then finally peace came and that never really left again. Mm. And it's now nearly 30 years ago. Mm. But one thing also that, uh, that I learned that all my ideas I had before about reaching something, getting enlightened, Boom, the big explosion <laughs> that, <laughs> that is at the end of the journey. It also didn't make sense at all. <laughs> it's possible that at a certain time you rotate into a new perspective. Okay, one chapter is finished and the journey continues. <laughs> there's no end to it. There's, there's no such thing <coughs> like a final enlightenment that you can say, now <laughs> I have it all. <laughs> But there is an end to suffering. We don't have to suffer if we don't want to. <laughs> if we don't force ourselves consciously or unconsciously to repeat the old patterns over and over and over. That we certainly can get rid of. When I'm talking about suffering, then I mean that mental anguish that we are producing. As long as we are having a body, as long as a body it appears, sometimes it hurts. I'm not saying that uh, as long as you have a body, you come to a state 
that your body will never hurt again. <laughs> that's, that's part of the story here. But if we are not at war with it, if we are not resisting all the time, then we are not making ourselves suffer because of it. Suffering is that mental anguish that we are creating by resisting against the fact of the experience, the fact of the situation. We have to learn to accept the situation as it is, but not accepting doesn't mean weakness. Accepting doesn't mean, okay, it's like this, oh, it's terrible, I cannot do a thing about it. <laughs> accepting means accepting the situation as it is, and then deal with it, and let it go. <laughs> Where not? Yes? If you said it is unfolding, unfolding. No? Right. Is there still in your... Um, experience also still unpleasant things comes up can happen right unpleasant things happen when as long as you are stay in this world yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it can be the situation but you are connected with the whole rest of humanity mm -hmm. anyhow you are connected with everything there is but as long as you are appearing as a human on a conscious, on a psychological level, you are connected with the humanity psyche. Mm -hmm. And a lot of unpleasant stuff is happening mm -hmm. there. <laughs> But if you don't resist against that, then it's not uh, creating trouble. Mm. We have the tendency that when uh, so-called positive emotions is there, then we think that's good. Mm. Let's have that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and when there are negative emotions, then, ah, oh, that's not good, let's not mm. have that. <laughs> mm. And we can learn uh, to accept both equally and let both equally go. Also mm. the pleasant emotions, not try to hold on to mm. them, but when emotions are always waves. They are Thank never you. staying. They come, they have a peak, they go. And if you deal like that with pleasant emotions and unpleasant emotions, then they don't mm. disturb your peace, they don't mm. disturb your sense of happiness. Mm. I don't uh, I'm not saying we have to start to look for that. <laughs> But most of the time the psyche is made up like this, that we desperately run after everything that is pleasant, the circumstances, but also our emotions, mm. and we desperately don't want what is not pleasant, mm. the circumstances and our emotions. Mm. And this time, destiny brings, in spite of that, the things mm. that we don't want. <laughs> that is also what you experience still, there are coming things As long as you live in this world, it is a like moment that. it's pleasant, a moment it's unpleasant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there is something that has nothing to do with mm. pleasant or unpleasant. Mm. There is, we have the idea that in order to be happy, we have to set up things pleasantly and then we can feel happy. Mm. But what we are looking for is simply that natural joyousness that is there that is not produced by circumstances, that is not produced by emotions, that if we don't prevent it, then it's simply there. Mm -hmm. That joyousness of existence. I'm not saying that an ecstasy... An, uh, an ecstasy is okay, it's fine, it's an experience, it has a peak, it comes, it goes. Mm -hmm. But there's something else, there is a peaceful joyousness that is simply there. It's always there, it's never absent, but we are very efficient in preventing it to come to the surface, to not be aware of it, with all the mental tensions, with all the resistance that we are creating. And especially because we want to be happy, so we want the pleasant things to come, and then they don't come, and there we resist, 
and feel miserable. All the pleasant things come and then we don't want them to go, we want to hold on to and these damn things they go again. And there we resist and there we are again miserable. And there we have that whole agenda of what we don't want, we don't want this to happen and these damn things happen in spite of that. Uh, and then when they are there, we want them to go quickly and fight against it and keep make them stay longer because of that. <laughs> instead of letting it just go. Once I understood that, I did have a, s a period where I was really seeking the unpleasant emotions mm -hmm. and just invoking all the bad emotions <laughs> on purpose and learning to, to really experience how they function, what they are doing and learn to deal with them but I'm not saying you have to start to do that mm. uh, or you have to run after, uh, not run after pleasant things, but you have to run after unpleasant <laughs> things. <Yeah. laughs> Simply learn to let mm. things come as they mm. come and let them go as they go. And that is equally important. Mm. <laughs> uh, and not simply the circumstances, but also the emotions that mm. come along. Mm. And then you can be happy in the weirdest situations. <laughs> Externally it may be not a happy situation at all and deep down you may have a, have a big laugh about it. <laughs> it's not a world where it's ever going to be just pleasant. I mean we can reduce the unpleasant stuff by not behaving like idiots all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's not, not here. There may be worlds, well, there are worlds, <laughs> where it's just pleasant. <laughs> These are holiday places. <coughs> but not here. This world is a working place. We came here to do a job. <laughs> so that continuous shift from pleasant to unpleasant to pleasant to unpleasant this is just how it is mm. there's no point in resisting against that fact but we can learn to deal with it that it doesn't affect the deep down joyousness of existence that is always there that you are, can be aware of that no matter how unpleasant it is and that you don't lose it also when it's pleasant and get completely mm. <laughs> carried away by the pleasantness of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this is the freedom, huh? if it not has to be fine and everything arranged and blah blah blah. It's certainly freeing you on this level yes. to always running, 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 desperately trying to bend the circumstances mm. and then feeling miserable when they don't act according to how you like it. That doesn't mean that you cannot put your creativity into the current of existence. That doesn't mean that you cannot have your preferences. It's not that you have to become some kind of a neutral blob of existence. <laughs> you can have things that you like better than other things. You can have music that you like better than other music. You can have circumstances that you like better than other circumstances. And if you uh, can arrange it, then okay, arrange it. Simply don't make your well-being dependent on that. If it works out, fine. If it doesn't work out, also fine. If you have that broad-heartedness, then you are not miserable. But still, you can uh, arrange your life. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs>